Sí. Okay, good evening, everyone. We have Oli today, tonight, for me. Oli. For us, Oli and I, we are in Europe, so it's good evening for us. Good afternoon for you. Oli is a dear friend of mine. We met, uh, I believe now, it's been 20 years since we met. We used to work together on a cruise ship. He was an engineer back then. And his ex-girlfriend, who became his wife, and now is his ex-wife, was one of my best friends there. And together they have two children. And she is from Colombia, which means Ole, after all these years, became a little bit Latino himself. So I would like him to introduce himself. <laughs> Welcome, Ole. Thank you. You you already introduced myself though. So um I don't know what to say. Um I'm 47 years old, living in Bergen, the next biggest city in Norway. Um, I have a daughter that is almost 18, and my son is 16. I have a dog and I have a cat, and I live alone with my, uh, my kids. Uh, at this moment, and for after, after I was re-signed the cruise ship, I started working as a as a elevator engineer, so that's my professional. So, and I also remember uh, good times with Simon and um, great memories. Oh, and tell us, tell us. <laughs> Don't give the price too soon. <laughs> but uh, I was lucky. So during my vacation, I had three and a half months vacation. So when I speak with your Brazilian, I was traveling from, from Santos, north in Brazil, all the way south to Brazil, over, the, over to Buenos Aires, well, to Santiago, uh, Buenos Aires, Santiago, and all the way up to Lima. So I have great memories from Brazil. One of my biggest, like greatest memory was Santos when I was in a local discotheque and saw all these Brazilian dancing salsa. <laughs> and they couldn't samba. speak, they could, samba, and they couldn't speak English. And then I felt I was really a tourist. So that was my main event in Brazil. So all people were friendly, all people were happy, and you were dancing and you didn't have any stress. So we European, we can learn a lot of from people from Brazil. So that's you me. Surely can. I think Bruce is the one who's going to be able to help you out with that because he goes to Santos quite often. Don't you, I Bruce? Do. I do. I actually go to a, a neighboring city called Sal Vicente. And okay, um, yeah, so it's all connected along the, the shore. It's, it's mm. so nice. So nice to go there, to walk along the beach every day and mm. to, you know, just relax. In the yeah. view of the ocean, I love the ocean. Yeah, it was fantastic. I just don't want to be there for a tsunami. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I don't know. But what are you? Happen. What? But what are you doing, Bruce? What? What are your? You, you are American citizen that moved to Brazil, or? Yes, I have a permanent you... residency for Brazil. I'm I'm a permanent resident here, so I don't need to return to the United States. You know to renew my visa and everything else. So it's pretty cool. I'm married to a Brazilian lady and mm -hmm. I've been married now for 17 years and I've been living here all that time, but I returned to the United States. I mean, we travel Europe and other places too, but mm -hmm. we just recently went to Colombia. We Whoa, just returned wow. two days ago. We returned. It was nice. I really liked what? it. The city called Cartagena. Wow. That's, that's the city for my ex-wife. Man, that is a nice city. You to see, do. that's a, that's a small world, guys. Yeah, so me and Simon, we've been traveling around the world, and Cartagena is also one 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 of my big spots. But it's a beautiful place, Where? and it's safe, right? It's in a Cartagena. beautiful city, and it's really safe. You feel safe yes. there. Amazingly safe. It's like wow. Yeah. Except I think somebody get, did something bad. My wife uh, bought a little chip for her phone to use in Colombia. And I think the guy down in the city, the walled city, he, he took her chip. So I think he took her information 
And I think she he may be using it. So it's a okay. bad situation. We're going to resolve it. She already went to Plata, which is the, the uh, phone carrier that she uses. And so I think she's resolving that. But I hope you didn't get in Jenny accounts, financial accounts. So it's a situation we're resolving it. But generally speaking, Cartagena was very safe. Very mm. safe. You could walk at night, no problem. Mm. Well, my, my daughter, she is going down there for vacation this summer. She's turned into 18, so she has a grandmother there. So, yeah, so I'm happy for her. But yes. I, I'm not that great. She's traveling around from Europe down there, but I think you be okay. Oh, yeah. what a protective daddy you are. <laughs> but you go to Colombia sometimes. Yeah, I was there last time in 2015. I've been there like three or four times, I think, for vacation. Okay. Yeah. My daughter want my daughter want me to go back, but we will see. Mm. Well, I tell you what, I'm sure the weather is better. <laughs> yeah, but what about the prices? Did you oh, rent a part? The prices to me in Colombia were similar to Sao Paulo. It's not yeah. cheap, but it's okay. Yeah. I mean, we had a meal for twenty two, no, forty four um, pesos. Um, I don't know. It's, I think you divided by almost four. So about $11, $12. Both of us had a meal. It was okay. It was a nice meal with some rice, uh, coconut rice. And mm. uh, we had some other food. And it was okay. You know, so the yeah. price was okay. What, did you rent an apartment? Did you stay at the hotel? or We stayed at Wyndham Hotel. It's an American hotel chain called Wyndham. Um, mm. Kind of like Hilton, Sheraton, something like that. And so the, mm. the hotel was very, very nice. We had a, a view from the roof of all the ocean and the city. It was very, very nice. I really, really liked it. So what do you paid for the hotel room for? Can you remember? Um, I don't know. I'd have to look room. back. But, oh, it was um, $400 for five nights. Yeah, that's not bad. No, it's very good for a nice hotel in a good yeah. location. It was only like about five to ten minutes by taxi to get to the walled city, which is the centerpiece yeah. of, of that, you yeah. know, Cartagena. Yeah, it's a nice, um, nice city. That's about $80 a night for a nice hotel, clean, beautiful view, nice mm. pool. I mean, yeah. all you need. Yeah. You can do I'm proud that I'm proud that you're telling people about it because People they say something so much bad thing about Colombia, but they have never visited Colombia. And well, people I, I are told so my friends, proud. I told my friends I was going to Colombia to buy my cocaine. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> they said what? <laughs> oh well. You know, we always hear the horror stories in the United States about Colombia that you, if you yeah. visit there, they are real bad at kidnapping people. Mm -hmm. is this, what is it? Is that true, Bruce? No, I didn't see that, but I'm sure that there are stories of that. In fact, oh my God. we went to Colombia because we saw Colombia in a movie called uh, The Sound of Freedom. And it was about children being um, abducted and sold for prostitution in Colombia. You know, but this is a story and it's real, but that stuff happens around the world. It happens in Norway too. Okay? Yeah. It's just the, it's the human human factor, where there are many bad things that happen around the world, maybe more in some places than others, but it, I did not feel at all. Um, but there's a lot of vendors that I didn't like that. But, you know, yeah. that was the only negative thing because we went inside um, some different, like, restaurants, very nice, air-conditioned, good service, beautiful inside. We went into a coffee shop. If we went into Starbucks two times, and Starbucks is so plain, but we went into this one very, like a boutique coffee shop. But it was not expensive. It was 100 pesos for four people. We all had Bailey's cream, okay, the alcoholic coffee-flavored drink. And then we had a cake. We split it four ways. And it was only 100 pesos. You know, it's not much. Yeah. About $25 for four yeah. people to have a good time and beautiful inside. It's like, you know, it's okay. It's okay. It's very nice. They have very, and we went to a, um, a restaurant on top of a place uh, that overlooked the walled clock. The walled clock are, uh, is a clock, like a clock tower, like Big Ben, yeah. more or less. Okay. 
but it's a, a big a tower in the city, and it's the centerpiece that enters the walled city. Because, and I can give you a whole lot, but you know what? I'm not going to talk anymore because it's not my time to talk. Bye. <laughs> okay, uh, Ole, would you tell us a little bit more about the city where you live? Like, it's not the capital, and how far it is from Oslo then? Yeah, my city is, um, yeah. in the back days, it was the capital. It was, it was um, many Germans that came to Norway to, to exchange uh, food and everything. So it's like uh, it was a base camp for exchanging uh, fish with food. So a lot of German created the city. Uh, so it's, you can see, you can see a German style in, in the city. Yeah, so that's the age we have. We call it, it's the city among seven mountains. So it's, uh, it's very beautiful. You have, you have, you live by the coast, the best coast of Norway. Uh, it's like, um, it's, it's uh, 50 meter, 50 minutes with car, with car, then you can go skiing in the winter. 15 uh, minutes. 50, 50 minutes. Okay. 50. Uh, yeah, if you if you travel with plane to Oslo, it takes 50 minutes. If you go by car, it takes seven hours. So wow. it's the yeah. It's a lot of student. It's a big uh, city for student. Um, yeah. The, the negative parts, it's the, one of the cities in, in Norway that rains mostly. So it's a lot of rain. Oh, really? it's, like sea, it's like Seattle in the US. Same as Seattle. It looks like Seattle. Oh. But what do, what do people do there for living, let's say? Like, they, do they work with oil? Yeah, it's uh, mostly... People in Norway. We found oil in the in the in the early seventies. So we were a poor country before that. So the oil uh, made us to change the welfare in Norway. Um, it's a very good system in Norway. Uh, everything that is it's not private people that owns the oil. It's the government. So all of the money goes back to the people. So we have. For example, free education. We have um, free um, free charge if you go to hospital. Um, very How good dentists? welfare. How about yeah. dentists? Not with dentists, but for example, if you if you want to create a family, uh, both parents uh, can stay home with the children with full paid. Um, so for how long? Pardon? For how long can they stay home? Yeah, or, the mothers can stay. The pen, the mothers can stay home a part, a partially one year with the kids. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Here in Brazil, you what? Do you get what two weeks here in Brazil? Two weeks leave, I think. I don't know. Maybe Ludmila knows that. If you get pregnant. Sorry, guys. If you know. if you have a child in Brazil, okay, you give labor. How long can a mom stay at home and get help from the government? If I'm not wrong, I think it's just uh, six months. I, I guess. Oh, okay. Well, right. the late good. parent leave. Uh, uh, parental. Parental. Yes. Uh, maternity, maternity leave. Maternity, maternity leave. leave. Yes. There it is. There you go. So you see, Ole, you live in one of the best countries in the world. That's for sure. Yeah, we are spoiled, and <laughs> some people are using it, right? Because if you, if you don't have uh, a job you get 60% of uh, your income every month as well. And if you go sick, if you go in a sick, uh, sick dumb list, you have 100% paid for one year. So some people are using it also. 
So it's uh, it's positive and negative part about that. Mm-hmm. You mean there's a lot of people just sitting on welfare all the time? Yeah, some some people do that. Of Lazy course. people, yes. How do how does the how government do even deal with population? that? No, it's it's not easy. It's not easy. Eric, did you have a question? Yeah, like how does the government even? Uh, how would you even control that? It's yeah, not I easy to control. It's not easy can. to control, but but for example, uh, you have a lot of benefits, but also it's it's very costful to live here. So if you only have sixty percent of your income, then you will lose forty percent. So people that don't work, it's a hard time to pay the bill. Because uh, there's heating so, as well. Yeah. So uh, the yeah the the prices is cold here in the summer and the winter, so you have to pay for their electricity. So yeah, so it's, oh. it's not a luxus life, but I've been traveling around the world, so I, I know how it is to don't have a work in different part of the world. So, um, of course, the, the, everybody here have a place to live, right? It's, it's, it's very few people are living in the streets. Okay, so Vanderlei asked, uh, what are some of the unique cultural traditions and that are unique to Norway? Well, I guess there's a bunch of them. That's a, that was a hard uh, question. <laughs> I have to prepare myself. Uh, we we have a um, tradition. Um, you have to help me. Tradition is a big word. I think like uh, when I was in Norway uh, some years ago, I ate whale meat for the first time. <laughs> and I don't yeah, yeah, think yeah. like anybody else in the world eats that. So maybe it's something really traditional from Norway. Eskimos eat it. Eskimos live on whale meat and mm. seals. So there you go. I think only this part of the world eat that. I think it was very amazing. Um, also, when I was That's, in uh, Oslo. Mm. Yeah, go ahead. Only. Yeah, tradition. For example, in the winter time, we go skiing, right? No, it's winter time every weekend, every Friday. I go skiing. That's a tradition, right? Yes, uh, I think so. Uh, like a, like a normal tradition, every morning I eat breakfast. We eat breakfast with the kids. Afterwards, school we do homework with the kids. We eat dinner with the kids. Afterwards, dinner we uh, we after after uh, homework. We go together with the kids to do sports. We follow the kids, see them play football, whatever sport they're doing. Mm-hmm. That's a typical week for a Norwegian. Well, that's um, cool. Yeah, I yeah. think you have the luxury because you have lots of time. And there's something that in Brazil or in America, it doesn't happen because they're just working, working, working. I think in Belgium, they try to do the same, but in Norway, it's even better structure. Like you have really free time to enjoy with your family and you get paid for that. Let's say, I don't think in Brazil, they are able to do that yet. And in the States either, right guys? It's just sometimes 12 hours work. Uh, What is the tax rates there? Like how much? Yeah, it's a lot, right? That's also the reason why- That's that's the different part. I pay thirty six percent tax. Yeah, that's fine. Mm. But you have all the cust- You have all everything you need, like education, hospitalization. You have everything and top level. Yeah, mm. yeah. You see you your do. you see your tax money. That's the difference. <laughs> because yeah, when we true. when we pay taxes, they just vanish. It's like we don't even need. It's <laughs> it's magic. It's just like where did they go? I don't know. <laughs> It's almost a mute. Yeah. It's, a, it's incredible. It's like entertainment. You know, every time mm. I just, it's just entertainment. Mm. Yeah, it's true. Now we are lucky. We are spoiled. We are. 
But in the same way, like um, that's the positive part, but we don't have any nannies. Uh, like a common Norwegian family, both of the, the man and the wife work. So normally we, we drive them, the kids, to the kindergarten at eight o'clock in the morning. We work until four and we, we pick them up afterwards the kindergarten. So it's, it's a hard life when, when two people are in 100% in work, right? And, and not that, not, I, can, I, I can't say it's a perfect life because um, you lose some time with your kids when they are younger. So my mom, she was home with me and my sisters until we were 10 years old, right? But my generation, we cannot afford it because it's very expensive to live here. So both have to work 100%. So that's, uh, that's the negative part with the situation. But like now, like in my situation in Belgium, it's been like years that I'm working four days instead of five. Do you have the same system in Norway, right? Mm -hmm. And is, is that for men as well? Because here in Belgium, I think 80% of women do that and 20% of men. Like my husband, he still works full time, five days. And for me, I work four days. So is it Norway uh, in, the same? In Norway, it's, it's like, it's, it's normal that both work 100%. But it's it's um, because it's very expensive to live here. So if you want to create your own family, you have to work hundred percent. Hundred percent would like... be five days a week. Yeah. Yeah. We have yeah we have we have free every Saturday and Sunday, and we have we have paid five weeks vacation a year. Mm. Okay, so Wanderlei, let me see. There's a few questions out here. First question is from Bruce. Uh, what type of engineer are you? What uh, what type of engineer are you? <clears throat> like what field specifically do you work for? Oli, do you hear us? Well, are you asking me? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, sorry, I thought it was Bruce. No, no. It's no, that's you. a question okay. from, from Bruce. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I work at, at this time. I work uh, before I was, I was, I was studying for work with electricity. And afterwards, I took more education to work on ships. And I use this education now to work with elevators. Elevators? Okay. Mm. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so question from Vanderlei. I'm a food lover. Tell us about <laughs> the fair. Tell us about the fair that is part of your normal diet. What's in your normal diet, I guess? What we normally eat in, in Norway. What's the typical meat? Yeah. Yeah. Typical food in general. Yeah, I can I can try to speak in you in, in general because in Norway it's like the, it changed a lot since uh, the last twenty years. We are like international. We have all kind of food, but like a traditional food in Norway, we we eat we 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 like to eat fish like we like you eat in in Brazil. We eat uh, the cod, we eat. We also like to eat lamb, we eat. Um, we make our own uh, special lamb uh, that we pre prepare uh, before Christmas. Then we, 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 take, uh, we take the lamb directly from, uh, from, the, from the sheep. And we take off everything is just the meat and we salt it and we dry it for two months before Christmas. 
and then we cut off. Cut off is just you know the the bones from the lamb, and we put it in in the boil with water, and then we steam it. So that that is the 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 main um, dinner for Christmas. And um, also we have um, we have a special. Um, meal that we we eat in the, in the in the autumn when the sheep gets uh, what do you call in english the baby sheep and then we we do we prepare the same thing but we we put plenty of special salads and uh, uh, together with uh, this lamb so is it veal yeah. is baby lamb veal yeah thank you I didn't know that. So we 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 very much like to prepare our own food. We prepare everything from the ground. We don't we don't uh, buy any any food that is uh, what do you call it prepared from before. Everything is from from basic, right? Right. So we are very we are very into that. We want to be healthy. That we, we we want to have pure food because we no mean no processed food. Yeah, no processed food. Thank you, Simon. So that changed for the last years that we are we want to go back to the basic. Oh, so you you guys were eating more processed foods a while back. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. My my or more my generation. Yes. No, the, the last last twenty years it changed. Uh, we, we are getting more into more healthy food. Right. We want we want to prepare everything by yourself. Right. No, because I always people... thought I always thought mm -hmm. Norway was always like this, always super traditional. Let's prepare it ourselves. Yeah. We, we we were in the past, but the last twenty years we changed, and now we're going back to the history. We want to go back from how we was before right right that's good so now we and 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 now we don't smoke anymore everybody quit smoking uh, we don't <laughs> drink that much yeah so uh, it's uh people they they live much much longer so it's people are totally crazy now so if you see people smoking in the, in the street, you think they smoke marijuana. It's it's really strange. It's it almost sounds like a large family. It's not even a country anymore. Hmm. Everybody's taking care of everybody. But we have problem. The the, the young generation uh, they don't uh, smoke weed anymore. They use cocaine. <laughs> so that's the... Yeah, that's a problem. I think, Ole, would you tell us about this huge problem that they have in Norway with depression? Because in the summer, it's like most of the country, you guys have like 14 hours daylight and not even 10 hours. It's a little bit darker. However, in the, uh, in the winter, you have like four hours daylight. So the possibility that even younger people, they're getting depression and, and they commit suicide, it's quite high in Europe. Would you tell them uh, something about that? Are you concerned yeah. about your children whatsoever? Yeah, it's, you know, what I mean is like when I was growing up, I came from a family that had money but my parents they didn't show me that they had money so i was i went to the shop with my mother and i always we always bought second hand hand clothes right we went to uh we had a summer house we went i lived up very basic uh, i didn't get any money from my parents i had to work from i was 15 years old so I learned how to make my own career. These kids that are growing up now, they have everything, right? We spoil them. They, they had a different education in school. So they are not that tough that we are. So like Simon trying to, yeah. The, the input for Simon is like, uh, 
we have uh, we have uh, the the four different um, season of of the year, like the summer times where I live is uh, it, in the summer times it starts in in uh, in July, and then it's into August. And it, we are lucky, for example, if we have like two weeks with sun, right? And then you have the spring and the winter, and, and it doesn't change. It rains all the time. Uh, in the summertime, we have the sun from 6 o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock. It's wonderful from, yeah, from June until August. But from August into May, then the sun goes down at uh, maybe 5 o'clock, and then it's dark. So then it's very tough for the young people to, <laughs> to, to get energy. And, you know, they're using the, uh, the mobile phone all the time. It's not good for them uh, either. So, uh, so that's, that's a hard time for the, the young people. So the money is, is not good for everything, you know. They get spoiled. Right. So Bruce made a question uh, on the same vein almost. With the idea of your children being spoiled, what do you do to combat this situation? Do your kids have <laughs> iPhones at all? <laughs> yeah, the kids, they got iPhone when they start at the first grade at school. Oh, no. But I don't get the... We don't buy the latest model, you know. We gave them... Uh, when we, we buy some new one, they get the old one. I think it's the same. But like like your children, they're already teenagers. Like your daughter is 18 and your son is? 16. You see? So they're already teenagers. Are they working already to make some money or they're just going to school? Uh, my, uh, my daughter, she is professional for making food so she's she is she's going to make a career for a professional chef so she is just signed on a michelin restaurant here in my city so i'm very proud of her wow yeah so Maybe but she's she, gonna she, work on a ship someday yeah she's gonna follow your steps and work on a cruise ship as well as a, I don't as a know. My, my, my son, he wants to be a sailor. So he is getting into uh, the education for uh, for working ships. But he wants to work in a bridge. Oh, cool. That's going to be that's gonna be tough. Yeah, we will see. Oh, well. Daddy's going to be able to help him out. I used to yeah. have some connections and it's going to be fine. Let's yeah. hear Ludmila. Ludmila is so quiet. Do you have some questions? Oh, yeah. I was thinking here about Maury. What I could ask Oli about, I guess, um, about Northern Lights, if I am pronouncing it right or not. <laughs> Yeah, can you tell me more about it, Oli? Yeah, it's it's the north part of Norway. That during the winter time they don't have any daylight at all. It's it's completely dark. In the summertime it's opposite. It's completely light. So it, it's fantastic in the summer, but it's opposite in winter. Yeah. And usually you guys uh, receive a lot of uh, tourists there to, to see the, the event. And um, this uh, event happens in a specific time of the year, month. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, which, which month? Which which month you have this uh, changing of light? Yes. Yeah, in the summertime, it's uh, it's uh, you have complete. It's completely. This is from. Uh, I think it starts in. I think it's in the beginning of July. It starts. Okay. 
I was in Boga in the north of Norway in September and I saw them. I saw the lights. However, mm -hmm. it's it was not that clear. So I think you have to be lucky. It's not like you see on TV and it's also every day <laughs> and it's that clear. All this beautiful lights. I just saw some green lights in the sky and mm -hmm. it was not that like clear as they see as you see on pictures or TV. So that I you think see, that you that you see in TV it's on Instagram. Then you yeah, it's like they, yeah. they make different. It so it's spectacular, but it's it's mm -hmm. it's nice of course, but it's not that oh, okay. shiny yeah. and then all these spectacular colors. It's just greenish mm -hmm. and it's nice. It's nice of course, but when they, what you see on TV is not the reality. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they're. To begin with, you need a clear sky because they're much higher than any clouds are going to be. But uh, and even then, you need the right sort of electromagnetic things going on uh, up there. And that's not easy at all. I know people that go, uh, they go on vacation just to see these things and they just can't. They can't even see them. Uh, and I also, maybe I can ask about the weather. Uh, how do you guys deal with the cold weather, really cold weather? Because I live in the north of Brazil. Here is really hot, really, really hot. So I think it's the extremes, right? How do you guys deal with it? My father, he says something about the about the weather different between the cold weather and the hot weather with the hot weather you can do nothing but the cold weather you can add a lot of cold, uh, cloth then you're safe so we add a lot of cold co cloth uh, on us so we 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 know we have special special uh, shirts uh, so we have we take the wool from the sheep so we, we add, we make uh, pants of it, and we make uh, shirts on it. We have that, uh, that's the first piece of, uh, of cloth, right? And then we have, uh, yeah, we, we just add a lot of cloth. So, uh, so it's no problem at all. It's, uh, it's amazing. So, but like my father says, when you come to warm weather, you have a problem, right? You, you, you can do nothing. Yeah, here in Berlin we uh we take a lot of shower during the day. <laughs> uh, the ones I that do Lutimila not have the air conditioning. Huh? Lutimila, you walk Sorry. late every day at home, so it's also sexy. Oh, no. It's also positive. <laughs> Actually, like people in Brazil in general, uh, they use less clothes, right? Because of the weather, yeah. Yeah, so like, like you, Lutimila is out walking naked at home. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sometimes going on a Zoom meeting, sexy, sexy. No, not at all. <laughs> we can do that, the, the, the neighbors. We cannot walk naked here. <laughs> the neighbors are going to see us. Oh, yes. All right, I, I am seeing a, a map, the map of Norway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, you can it. see the map. Like Norway really took all the coastline. Sweden. Oh, um, if you could focus in more on Norway, we, you can see all the cities, more of the cities. We can see where he lives. Yeah, I, I bet Sweden doesn't really like a single bit the fact that you guys have oil and they don't. Yeah. Ah, Bergen, right. Bergen. Bergen, yes. In the west coast. I don't uh -huh. see the map. Yes. If you go if you go in the middle of the west coast and go a little bit more south, then you have Bergen. There it is. Yes. Yeah, it's a big. What city. about where the northern lights are? What what city is that? Way up north. Oh, that's just way up there. <laughs> Who, then who you is have to go there in the map? Vanderlei. Yeah. Okay, okay. go up. Go up, please. Let's see where the yeah, drag it up there so you can see. You can go out too, so you can see more. 
It's probably anything above a certain parallel. Probably. I think you have a better, better chance of seeing it in Canada. Mm. Oh, I, I don't think. think so. I lived in Canada. I've never seen it when I was in Canada. No, um... like if you go, if you go like way up there where nobody lives, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I wasn't there. Can you guys see the first seat on the top, Bodo? That's where I, I went. And Saturday at 9 a.m., my friend who is participating, she's going to be a special speaker. She lives there. So she's going to be telling us about Bodo on Saturday, 9 a.m., Brazilian time. All these cities are in fjords? Yes, or... and that's where I saw the, the lights. And I saw the fjords as well. And I went to Lofoten there. You see all these islands there? I went there as well. Wow, okay. you know, no, on the left, on the left, Lofoten, Lofoten. There's all the islands, and that's where the fjords are. Lots of mountains, huh? Yeah, that's beautiful. It looks like a beach. Yes, they have. Beaches, Do they have beaches there? But it's not warm. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think they, they go. Mean. They go to the beaches with with a jacket on. Just like uh, but in, 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 the, in the summertime, it's warm. In the warm, summer, of right? course. Summer. But it's still, yeah. it's still... But the water's not warm. <laughs> no, it's cold. But, but, it's, but it's strange, no, in, in Europe, you know, Simon, in, 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 in Spain this summer, it's like it was yeah, almost 40 degrees. Right? Yeah. So, so no people, they are saying that many people from so, so part of Europe, they moved to Norway because of the weather. So they are, it's strange, you know. If they are getting more and more north because of the weather. The weather is changing, so yes. Yeah, with the global warming, it's getting hotter and hotter, so yeah. they want it to be cooler during their life. Hmm. Meyer. I but, uh, Meyer, this it's a ridiculous joke. Like yeah. I don't think you 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 pronounce that way in Norwegian. Ole, how do you say that? Mir, what? Probably. What? Mir. This, this city. How do you call this city? Where I live? No, no, no. The, this one on the. On the map. Oh, he, it's hard for him to see on the phone. Sorry. Oh, I have to... he's on the phone. Oh. Oh, yeah, sorry. you can always tell somebody's on the phone because it's very short um, image. Oh, never mind. Okay, okay. let's close the map. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Vandalay. It's probably like uh, Mir or something like that. M-Y-R-E. Uh, you're muted, Ole. It's Mira, Mira, Mira. Ah, ah okay. Just Mira. like, almost like Portuguese. Yes. <laughs> Mira. Yeah, actually, mira means look in Spanish, right? Look? Ole, do you speak some Spanish? Do you understand a lot? I do speak no. Oh, it's... Uh, yo comprendo, no habla mucho. Yo comprendo. But yo comprendo oh, más uh, español con Sudamérica. No mucho espan con uh, español. Yeah, mm -hmm. forget it. And that's why it's important to do the speaking, you know, in English for us and for Spanish, when we go to a Spanish speaking country, I am committed to learn Spanish before I go back to another Spanish speaking country. It was frustrating for me to say, I'm speaking, but it's not, we're not speaking apples with apples, oranges with oranges. It's all mixed up. Could they understand your eyes, Bruce? No, I mean, she tries to speak Spanish and her Spanish sounds so strange to me. <laughs> So oh, she, she probably speaks Portuñol as well, <laughs> yeah, just like the rest of us, okay? But it's so funny when people say they speak Spanish, but they don't, and then they go with Portuñol, and nobody understands them. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's so funny. And I see also some people looking at me when I say that I do speak Spanish. They look like, mm-hmm. I say, yes, <laughs> I went to Peru, I went to university, and I say, oh, oh. 
oh, okay, so you must speak it. I say, just test me then. But anyhow, that is so funny how Brazilians say, oh, yes, they speak Spanish. And then they go, what's happening? I cannot follow. They do speak Is there Portuguese. a language in, actually in Norway? What's the, the what Norwegian language? It's different, right? What do you mean? Well, I mean, we, we you have, have Swedish language, you have Norwegian language. No, no, no. no. Swedish is in, that's the own, that's the state that's the the own country, right? They speak Swe Swedish in Sweden. They speak it's Danish in Denmark. They were a different country, right? So you have your own language, and it's a lot different from the others. Yeah, it's like it's like Spanish and Portuguese. We understand each other. And so, like with German and Dutch, the Holland, people in Holland, something like this, similar. No, it's, it's like Spanish and Portuguese. Oh, okay. Spanish, is Spanish so and Portuguese or like... Has. Go ahead, Bruce. No, no, go ahead, Eric. Spanish and Portuguese, the thing is, the reason Brazilians have an issue speaking is because we understand, we know like 90% of the words from Spanish, but we miss all the little con connectives and things in the middle to form phrases and we can't follow their speed. The speed of Spanish people's way much faster than way, than us, especially Brazilians. But the words are the same, you know? So is that the same sort of situation between the Nor Nor Norwegian, Norwegian and Swedish? I think uh, like from, from, from what I hear, like my friend who is coming on Saturday, She's Swedish, but she lives in Norway, so she learned pretty quickly, and she was able to read quite fast. That's the same thing with Portuguese and Spanish. If we take a, a text, we're gonna you're gonna be able to read and understand it. However, you cannot speak it. It's pretty much the same. The languages are very similar. On the other hand, I think when you go to Finland, Ole, no, but it's Finland is different, Finland, right? Finland is completely different. Completely, it's it's one of the language nobody understands Finnish. It's completely <laughs> different. But yeah. Swedish, Norwegian, and Danish is similar, right? They're in the same. Yeah, I, 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 for me, it's like a dialect in Norway. It's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's very similar. But I heard Danish, Danish is the hard Dan though. Danish and Norwegian, it's very similar. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like reading uh, Danish is like reading Norwegian, but reading. Swedish is different, but it's easier to understand Swedish than Danish, but it's no problem for me. All right. Cool. And do you think like all Norwegians are bilingual? Do you speak English, all of you? Yeah, it's um, my generation. I think we were the first that could speak English because they teach us at the fourth grade at school. But our children are much better to speak English than my generation. Mm -hmm. because, because when I was internet. because when I was growing up, it we only had one channel and everything was in Norwegian. It's like same in Brazil in South America, you were dubbing, right? Uh, so now that the, the young people they are using social media, everything, so they get everything from from movies, so it's, yeah, they have a benefit there. So do, do you think that when they speak English, their accents also much different than yours? Like yours is really- I, I, think, I, I think they don't have that. I don't think they have my accent. I, of course it's different, but uh, they are in a higher level. Oh, well, we understood you very well. So don't be shy about that. Yeah, but no, I haven't speak. English for 20 years like this, you know. Wow. But only when I'm on vacation, I speak. I speak Congratulations on your English. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like. So uh, you don't use English at all at work? I, I, I speak sometimes when I, I need some support, but it's not that often. Maybe, I don't know, not that much. So not on a daily basis? No. And your girlfriend, she speaks Norwegian now as well. Now my, yeah, my girlfriend, she's she's Spanish. She lives here like uh, 25, 20 years. So she speaks oh. uh, fluent, fluent Norwegian. Because Ole is also 
like after all these years, he's not <laughs> able to go back to another region, right? You're also Latino. <laughs> yeah. When you first tried Latino, you, you all, oh, all the way up. Oh, there's no way back. <laughs> no. But she's like, uh, me and her discussed that because she grew up in Spain and and everything at the television was in Spain, Spanish, right? So it was hard for her to learn English. She had to go in a private school to learn English. She can uh, come to English Brazil. Yeah. Pardon? We need more students. Here are all the teachers. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, and the same problem is in in in, in Colombia, probably in Brazil as well, right? You, everything is in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. But but here in, I don't know how it is in, in, in your country, Simone, but here in Norway, nothing is dubbed. Everything, if you... If you look at American movies, American. If it's from Brazil, it's Portuguese. From Spanish, yeah. it's Spanish. And then you have the subtitles. Here is with in, 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 yes. And in Norway. So I think that's the difference because people are learning English very fast. Yes, that's that's definitely the key. If you yeah. if you start listening to the language when you're young and you start copying, so that's for sure the reason why the younger generation they can speak clear English, almost mm -hmm. faultless. How, how do you call it? What the name? Flaw, flawless? Flawless. Fluent. No, yeah, yeah, fluent, but this word is difficult for us Brazilians. Flawless, flawless. Uh, tipo, sem problemas, sem erros. Flawless, flawless. 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 As you see, that's a very difficult word. It's... But I, but I remember... But I remember when I was starting working on cruise ship, I, my English was not at that good level. So I remember I was watching English movies with English subtitles. Yes, that's also a very good tip. To yeah, so that's that's something I did then to learn learn English. Mm -hmm. I think we can give this tip to our students as well. So. Mm. Thank you so much. Oli, we are almost finished with our hour. Time flew by. It was really fast, the way you could entertain us. Thank you so much for your time. We really hope to see you again sometime here with us. Maybe next time we're going to get more Brazilians to you because this time there were plenty of Americans in the house. It was only two ladies who are Brazilians. Yes, I, if I can consider myself Brazilian in this. Anyhow, thank you so much. I think yeah, I'm not American, man. Mm, yeah, I think everybody pleasure. appreciated your presence, and I hope to see you soon. Yeah, of course, I'm here. Thank but you. Take guys. care. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good evening and a good late afternoon for all of you. Bye, bye. Right. Bye, bye. bye.